Breaking news tonight, the president revealing he was going to have a secret meeting tomorrow at Camp David with the leaders of the Taliban. But he's decided to cancel and suspend the peace negotiations, laying out his entire rationale on Twitter. Let's get right to CNN White House reporter Sarah Westwood. Sarah, what is the president saying? Well, Anna, President Trump revealing that tomorrow he did have high-level talks, a high-level meeting at Camp David with the Taliban, with the president of Afghanistan. But in a surprising series of tweets tonight, he's announcing that summit will no longer take place. Writing just moments ago, unbeknownst to almost everyone, the major Taliban leaders and separately the president of Afghanistan were going to secretly meet with me at Camp David on Sunday. They were coming to the United States tonight. Unfortunately, in order to build false leverage, they admitted to an attack in Kabul that killed one of our great soldiers and 11 other people. I immediately canceled the meeting and called off peace negotiations. Now, it's unclear what President Trump means when he says he ended these peace talks. The lead U.S. negotiator with the Taliban, the special envoy to Afghanistan, had announced less than a week ago that the Taliban and the U.S. had reached an agreement in principle that would have involved the U.S. pulling out some troops from Afghanistan in exchange for the Taliban meeting certain conditions, but a major, major setback here with the bombing that claimed the life of one U.S. service member, 11 other people, when a car bomb exploded near the U.S. Embassy in Kabul on Thursday. So, Anna, it's unclear what the fate of that preliminary deal may be. The special envoy to Afghanistan had already announced that he was heading back next week to Doha to, to continue negotiations. Unclear, Anna, if those are going to continue. Okay, Sarah Westwood, we know you will come back to us if you get more information. But let's discuss with our analysts and our reporters, CNN military analysts and former Pentagon and State Department spokesman, retired Rear Admiral John Kirby is with us. New York Times columnist and Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Nicholas Kristof is here. And CNN Pentagon reporter Ryan Brown is with us as well. Admiral Kirby, before we even began to talk about Trump and how he revealed this on Twitter, First, I want to ask you about the significance, this idea of trying to get Taliban leaders to the U.S. for the first time. Yeah, truly remarkable if true. I mean, uh, just uh, just stunning. Uh, we have not uh, allowed them on U.S. soil, at least, at least since uh, we started combat operations there in 2001, and for good reason, uh, because we don't want them to rule Afghanistan again, and they are very much and have been the enemy, uh, uh, at least one of, of our enemies in Afghanistan. This this would give them, regardless of whether the talks were successful or not, uh, this would give them a, a boost of political legitimacy that they don't deserve, certainly not this at this stage in negotiations, at least that we've seen, uh, and would be a huge propaganda victory for them, not, not to mention, uh, I, I think, a slap at the the Afghan government and President Ghani when, when they haven't really even be br been brought in uh, appropriately to these discussions to this point. Ryan, the president cited the killing of a U.S. soldier as the reason he broke off this secret meeting no one previously knew about. But 16 U.S. troops have been killed in combat this year in Afghanistan. He was still planning on hosting the Taliban at Camp David. Does his explanation hold water? Well, it's an interesting explanation, Anna. As you mentioned, there have been a number of, of combat deaths in Afghanistan this year, many of which have been claimed by the Taliban. This one did take place in Kabul, close to the headquarters where the international forces are located. It was a little bit more high profile. Uh, as the president noted, uh, several s Afghan civilians were killed as well. And this has actually led many in the Afghan government to call for a suspension or at least pause to some of these peace negotiations. However, uh, officials familiar with the matter are telling CNN uh, that this, in fact, the decision to call off this round of talks in Camp David was actually made by the White House and the State Department, not by the Afghan government, despite them asking for these talks to be called off. And it's not clear at this time whether the, the, the talks are permanently called off, whether this suspension will continue. Officials are planning for potential future meetings, we're being told. So where these talks are right now is not entirely clear. Nick, what do you make of the reason President Trump is giving, at least publicly, for canceling this secret Camp David meeting with the Taliban, pinning it on the death of a U.S. soldier this week? Well, to me, the explanation simply doesn't compute. Uh, it doesn't compute partly for the reason that you said, that indeed there have been a lot of other uh, American deaths there. But in addition, you know, this bombing that he refers to happened uh, Thursday morning Afghanistan time or Wednesday night our time. And so it seems odd that he would only be canceling now when, in fact, you know, planes would be in the air bringing people here. And so I wonder if it wasn't, in fact, uh, you know, something else. And I think one 
One plausible reason would be that President Ashraf Ghani uh, had uh, a lot of reservations. He was critical of, he was very concerned about the proposed deal, and especially in the run-up to the Afghanistan elections. I think he didn't want to have a, a deal that made it look to Afghans as if, as if the U.S. was pulling out. Uh, so I think he may have refused to uh, show up, and it would be impossible for a president to meet with the Taliban without President Ghani. You know, and look, in addition, I mean, John Bolton seems to have been pretty much frozen out of the uh, discussions. He may have, uh, he may have had a fit. And President mm -hmm. Trump may also have simply realized that the political implications of bringing the Taliban to Camp David and meeting with them and having, you know, images of him um, uh, celebrating with them, a peace agreement, you know, really wouldn't look good. So I, I wonder if it wasn't some combination of these other factors rather than the one that he mentioned. So what do you see as the impact then on the ongoing negotiations for a US, U.S. troop withdrawal? So I, I know, oh well, look, uh, I, you know, I, I, um, I was stunned by this, but uh, my best guess is that at the end, this is going to be more of a bump than a permanent halt to the process we've been in. And I think that's partly because uh, President Trump really does want to bring out U.S. troops. Uh, I think that there is, you know, a strong pressure from both the U.S. and the Taliban to try to work out a deal. Uh, and it, I, I wonder if after the Afghan elections, uh, maybe there, you know, something will, will happen. If this isn't more of a delay, than a uh, a real end to the process, but I would I would sure be surprised if there is any major negotiation happening at Camp David. I think the idea of the Taliban coming to Camp David is uh, kind of overwhelming and probably will not ever end up happening. Admiral, what could the U.S. hope to accomplish in a meeting like this? Well, it, you would have to assume and hope that if they were going to have a meeting at this level uh, at Camp David, that they were that far along in, in the process so that it would be really just nailing down the details, some verification procedures for both sides, you know, sort of inking all the final eaches of, of the deal. That's what you would hope or you would expect uh, with a meeting with the President of the United States at Camp David. And I just, I, I, Anna, I spoke to Afghan uh, officials this, just recently as this weekend uh, who are close to the process, uh, and I got n no assurance from them at all. All, that they were that confident that we are anywhere near that stage. In fact, uh, I, I sensed and heard great frustration that they've been left out of it to this point, that there hasn't been any consultation. President Ghani was simply showed the draft agreement. He wasn't even allowed to hang on to a copy of it. So it doesn't appear like we're anywhere near that level. And I agree with Nick. I don't think this will stop it or end it, uh, but it certainly, it certainly does demonstrate how difficult this is. And don't forget, the Taliban just eight days ago conducted a very coordinated major attack in Kunduz. They have been fighting all along these these negotiations and have proven really no, no little to no willingness uh, to stop the violence while they are in fact negotiating. And, and Admiral Kirby, the fact that the president made this announcement on <sighs> Twitter. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wish I could say I was stunned by that. I'm more stunned by the, the invitation to the Taliban to Camp David and the fact that they thought that they were far enough along to have this meeting than I am that he did it on Twitter and canceling it on Twitter. Seems to be a, a modus operandi for this president. This is the way he conducts uh, policy. There is no real process, no interagency discussion. As Nick pointed out, John Bolton seems to be man left out here. Um, and this, this, is just, uh, this is just the way this guy uh, continues to conduct foreign but, policy. But why publicize it if the meetings were going to be secret in the first place? And now they're not even happening. Why publicize it? Because I think, again, I, I think there, I, I want to keep going back to what Nick said because I think what he said was very prescient. I think there's probably more reason to this than just the fact that there was an attack in Kabul. And I think he's covering for that. I think he, he wanted to be the one to say he canceled it. He stopped it. He ended it. And it's the Taliban's fault when actually it's probably much more complex than that. Ryan, what does this breakdown of talks then mean for the 14,000 U.S. troops still stationed in Afghanistan? Well, that's a great question, Anna. You know, the president and his chief negotiator, uh, Ambassador Khalizade, had both said that the plan was to withdraw a significant number of those troops, going from about 14,000 down to 8,600 within about a 125 days after the signing of an agreement. Now that the agreement's fate appears to be in a bit of jeopardy, it's unclear exactly what's going to happen to that troop drawdown. You know, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Joseph Dunford, he spoke on Thursday. He, he said that this deal was going to be conditions 
base. And he actually, he himself, you know, said, look, it's not clear that the Taliban are going to live up to this deal and that they're going to have to watch this carefully. And he said that if the Taliban don't kind of play ball here, that he wouldn't be surprised if these negotiations unraveled. Again, foreshadowing perhaps a little bit that the complexity of dealing with this insurgent group that is waging a very violent, very active uh, assault on the Afghan government as these talks are ongoing.